Hey, what's up, family? I hope that all is well. I want to welcome you back to Perfecting Your Pursuit. And we're going to be continuing on with the series entitled Managing Your Manhood. The Bible says in Romans chapter 15, verse number four, it says, whatever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. It's talking about the stories. This is the New Testament, by the way, in Romans. But it's talking about the Old Testament, as we call it. And it's simply saying that when you hear the instructions written in the law, the Torah, when you hear the stories shared about Moses and David and all the different characters in the Bible, their triumphs, uh, their failures, and how they overcame adversity, etc., it's saying that those things were written for our learning, meaning quite simply we can learn lessons from the lives that have been lived and led in the past. And that same principle applies to the video we're going to watch today and this new installment of Managing Your Manhood that I'm going to begin. And so without further ado, you guys know my mission. A king steps into the midst of chaos and confusion with one mission in mind. That's to bring order. With that said, King Isom's at your service. I'm ready to teach. And Prince Isom is in your seat, ready to learn. I want to look at a couple of, uh, of scriptures here, really one in particular. But again, this is, I believe we're on part six of managing your manhood. And this is going to be a series within the series with the focal point of let's talk about sex. Without a doubt, the two most important aspects of manhood in the natural, the practical living perspective, if you will, is sex and money. And so I want to, within the confines of managing your manhood, and also it flows into cherishing your childhood and conquering your kingship, let's talk about sex. We're going to talk about sex, brothers. We're going to dig into it. And our focus on this particular segment, and uh, a few more to follow here and there is, DNA tests should be mandatory. DNA tests should be mandatory. Let me set this up and then we're going to move to our video commentary because like I said just a few moments ago, these things that are written in the past are written for our learning, but also these TV shows and these different court shows, specifically talking about paternity tests, they're written for our learning as well. In Ecclesiasticus chapter 25 verse 22, Again, that's Ecclesiasticus. That's in the Apocrypha. Uh, not Ecclesiastes, but Ecclesiasticus. It's a powerful scripture about the woman. You know, and not to digress, but the Bible has a lot to say in explaining the nature and tendencies of the woman. And so I'll be extracting some nuggets of wisdom as we move along in managing your manhood and talking about sex. It says, when a woman maintains her husband or maintains a man she's living with, look what it says about that type of woman. She is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. When a woman has to maintain her man, her husband, she is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. Let's define those terms to get clarity. To maintain someone is to provide them with the necessities for their life and existence, to take care of them, meaning they can't live without you. We're not talking about where the man is working, the woman is working, and you're pooling your resources, and you don't really need one another to survive. To maintain someone means that woman is taking care of you. That without her, you would be on the street or you would be at a loss. And when a woman is put in that predicament, or more rightly stated, when a man allows himself to mismanage his manhood to such a degree that a woman has to take care of him, here's the fruit of that. The Bible says she's full of impudence. The word impudent means that she's offensively bold in her disrespect and contempt and disregard for you, brother. And she's shameless 
in communicating that contempt and disregard. She doesn't respect you. And she'll be bold in disrespecting you even in public. It also says she is full of reproach. Reproach means to express disapproval, criticism, and disappointment. And a woman that maintains a man, a man who mismanages his manhood to such a degree that he has to be maintained by a woman, you can expect disrespect, disregard, contempt, and a shameless display of disapproval, criticism, and disappointment. And hear me, brothers, even though the woman may not be, you know, we don't like that she does it, you're the man, and it's your fault. Because, see, in managing your manhood, let me direct your attention to the scripture on the bottom there. David commanded his son, our foundation scripture for managing your manhood, he said, be strong and show yourself a man. Show means to reveal in your behavior and your character. So with that being said, sorry, forgive me. With that being said, I want to go into the commentary on this particular video from Paternity Court. Uh, they're going to talk and I'm going to chime in. And once again, uh, this is for the men. Young ladies, you can watch as well, but this is for the men to help you in managing your manhood. Let's talk about sex, beloved, and specifically the fact that DNA tests should be mandatory. Let's get it. Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This case of England v. Kaiser. Thank you, Ron. Good day, everyone. Ms. England, you say that you and Mr. Kaiser have been together for six years, have a three-year-old son together, but claim he's now denying your six-month-old son Isaac, and you're here to prove that he is the father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Kaiser, you acknowledge one child with Ms. England, but say Isaac is not yours. You say that during your separation from Ms. England, she slept with another man, and you are 100% sure he is the father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Okay, real quick, just to give you a little quick little snapshot. She was talking a little fast there. Uh, Miss England is 31. Mr. Kaiser is 41. we got a 10-year age difference. Uh, older man with a younger woman. You would think he's more mature. Uh, also, she had a child before she met Mr. Kaiser. They've been together, I think she said, for about six years, I believe. And while they were together, they had a child together. So keep that in mind. When he met her, she had a child. While they were together, they had a child together. And then they say they separated for a while. And uh, she may have, allegedly has, gotten pregnant and had another child with another man. She denies that, but regardless of the fact... That child, excuse me, is six months old now. So keep that in mind. Now, I want you to begin to look at the mannerisms of the woman who I would deem a typical modern woman, TMW, and of the man and the crowd. Let's begin to look and dissect some things here. Why is Mr. Kaiser accepting one child but not the other? We've been through everything. I've supported him. I've took care of him. I've turned him into the man he is. You know, I took him from ashy to classy. And... <laughs> He's not supportive at all of it, and he wants to say that it's not his. I've always been class. No, that can be debated. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So first of all, we got, um, you know, uh, Big Bird. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Let me keep it real, man. Uh, you can honestly see right there. She said, I took care of him. I made him into the man he is today. I took him from ashy to classy. Now, this looks like a so-called white woman. I'm like Dave Chappelle, like, oh, damn, that's racist. <laughs> what you mean, ashy to classy? But anyway, anyway, just having a little fun there. But you can just, you know, you can not even infer. It's clear that this woman uh, seems to believe what well, she said it. I made him who he is. You know, I, I'm, the, he, I'm the, the reason why he is today is because of me. Look how bold she is. Look how cocky she is. And when the man tries to defend himself and say, I've always been classy, she retorts with, that's debatable. Okay? Interesting. Keep that in mind. Um, Y'all, she, she, she knows why. She knows why I was denying the baby. She stayed gone for three months with this other man. Did you move in with another man, Miss yes, England? 
Yes, Your Honor, I did. So what? You hear that tone? Yes, Your Honor, I did. When a woman maintains a man, she is full of anger, impudence, and reproach. She is full of a, a cocky, shameless, bold proclivity to disrespect, disparage. Yes, ma'am, I did. I want you to keep that in mind, man. When you don't manage your manhood as you should, and you allow yourself to get in a predicament where a woman is maintaining you, and, and we're going to see, I don't believe she's maintaining him, but she definitely believes she is, and you can soon see she thinks she's smarter than this man. That's a construct that no man should ever allow himself to be in where your woman does not hold you in high regard. Let's keep going. You all in a relationship. I want to get the yes, background. We were in a relationship for four and a half years okay. before we finally split. Let me go back a little, bit. Go back a little bit here. Okay. Um, y'all, she knows why. She knows why I denied the baby. She stayed gone for three months with this other man. Did you move in with another man? Yes, Miss England? Yes, Your Honor, I did. So wait. You all in a relationship. Now this this is little baby Isaac, okay? You cute little fella, but I'm not trying to be harsh. I don't care how cute he is. We talking about managing your manhood, and we talking about sex, and more specifically, beloved, hear me. DNA tests should be mandatory. Here you are holding a baby. You're already assuming the role of a father. You're allowing yourself to establish a bond. You've been with this woman since conception. With the woman through that nine months up to now, and you have yet to get a DNA test, and you just said yourself that you're not sure, make it make sense. Let's keep listening. I want to get the yeah, background. Man. We were in a relationship for four and a half years okay. before we finally split, and I went with the other man. Okay. And so during that time, you had Look, one child. Now, let, let, now let me, and, and I, I want to let it run. I don't want to get this to be too long, but I want you to watch this, brothers. These things are written for our learning. The woman, and anybody who's dealt with women, you know this is true. And ladies who may be listening, you know it's true as well. The woman is one of the greatest actresses in the world. The woman functions from a place of deception. From the makeup to deceive you on their looks, eyelashes, eyeliner, lipstick, from the hair weaves, just being real, to deceive you on their hair. Now we got the, the uh, well, we've been had the breast implants. We got the BBLs, the Tommy tucks. The woman functions from a place of deception. That's why they call it makeup. And it's also the case beyond the physical. The woman likes to make up or construct a narrative, and the primary role she loves to occupy is the role of the victim. And in order to be a victim, someone else has to be the villain. The woman is allergic to accountability. As a matter of fact, accountability is the woman's kryptonite. Shout out to the late great godfather Kevin Samuels. Brother illustrated that so wonderfully. I'm talking about the typical modern woman. And the woman will always cast herself, herself as the victim. And in order to do that, when the quote-unquote villain tries to retort with evidence to the contrary of her victimhood, she will deflect. She'll jump over here and jump over there. And it's to confuse the listener and it also to confuse the man. Now, I want you to watch as that plays out as she begins to construct the narrative. But she's already begun because she took it from Asher to Classy. Just keep that in mind because as you manage your manhood, you have to know the people you're dealing with and their nature. Yes. Right. Well, yes. And then during the split, during the split, Isaac was conceived. All right, and so basically your relationship is completely on the brink. Like the, the stakes are high. If it doesn't get solved today, it's over. I can't do it anymore. It's it's done. Because it's that stressful. It's that right. Everything is an argument. If we're talking about what's for dinner, peanut butter and jelly, fries, b burgers, everything is, that's not my baby. A paternity question, it permeates every aspect of your life. And so I can understand what you're saying. You know, you're just talking about dinner and we're talking about paternity. We're still arguing about it. Yes. Well, and, and that, that's the fault of the man. That's like you arguing about uh, 
a bowl of water in the middle of the floor and you arguing about it. Why is that bowl of water there? Why is that bowl of water there? Why not simply pick the bowl of water up and put it in its place? Why are you arguing with the woman about paternity when you have DNA tests to answer that question to almost 100% degree of accuracy? That's on the man. You have to show yourself a man. And you show yourself a man by revealing in your behavior and your character that you know how to rule at least your own life, at least be able to maintain yourself, and at least have the wisdom and wherewithal to say, if I have a question about paternity, I'm getting a DNA test while little Isaac, it, Google got getting that first pat on the butt. Go ahead and pat him on the butt. Okay, he got all his toes, all his fingers. Now, doctor, get that swab together and get some blood too and let's get this thing settled. DNA tests must be mandatory and brothers, you have to mandate it. Listen to him. Is it difficult for you to, to handle all of this, Mr. Kaiser? The, yes, ma'am. The she, feeling of not... She don't going. understand what I'm going through, y'all. The whole time, I stepped to the back true enough. I accepted the back because we already had a two-year-old son together. You know what so I'm saying? So you accepted her back. You said, you know what, I let's try again. Back. Okay, now that's the problem right there. Look what he said. He said, she don't want to thing one go. I'm, okay, I'm not trying to mock the brother. <laughs> he brother got tongue tied. I'm not trying to mock that. She said, he said, she don't understand, she doesn't understand what I'm going through, Your Honor. Brothers, let me help you. And let me help you too here, Mr. Kaiser. It's not that she does not understand what you are going through. Miss England does not care what you are going through. And brothers, this may be hard for you to understand. And it may be hard for some sisters to hear. But those who know, you know. The typical modern woman is self-centered to the core. Her primary concern is herself. And if you're expecting a TMW, a typical modern woman, to be concerned about you, to prioritize you, brother, you are living in the land of folly, foolishness, and confusion. It's your job as the man, brother, to manage your manhood and prioritize yourself. And you're talking about she don't understand what you're going through. If she continues to demonstrate a lack of understanding, the problem is no longer her. The problem is you. You are the man. She was still pregnant by this other man the whole time we were together. Uh, yeah. Let me clarify that as well. He said, yes, I agree to take her back. Oh, my gosh, man. I don't want to get bogged down here. Brothers, hear me. You, from what we've heard so far, this woman left you. She says it later, she left him. Well, whatever, whatever reason she gave, she went and got her back blowed out for some dude who she'd been checking out anyway for three weeks or however long it was. And you took her back. Why? Because we have a child together. Hear me, beloved. Hear me, brothers. And I'm going to echo this probably throughout. The woman knows the inherent nature of the man. It's in our nature to want to protect and to provide. And she knows the nature of this man right here. Brother seems like a nice guy. May not be the sharpest knife in the drawer. I'm just being real, making my inferences here. And so the woman knows she can rely on the man to be a traditional man when she is nothing like a traditional woman. And they take advantage of your nature, brothers. Now, what that means is this. You need to begin to retrain your mind and to begin to discipline your nature. Christ said it like this, don't cast your pearls before swine. Your nature is a pearl of great price. It's a pearl of great price to be a protector and a provider. That's a noble thing. The problem is, is that we as men don't recognize the terrain that we're on today. The terrain of the typical modern woman, the terrain of a society that wants you to worship the mother goddess and pedestalize the woman, no matter how foul she may act and no matter how disrespectful she may be. It's the terrain that will tell you that if you got a child, even if it's not yours, that you ought to be there for the woman. You ought to protect the woman. You ought to be like Tupac. I think it's time we heal our women. Be mean to our women. 
Because if you don't be able to raise the babies that don't hate the ladies. You better get over that Tupac mess and wake up, brothers. We talking about managing your manhood. Ain't no way in hell. Any woman. I'm going to move on. But ain't no woman coming back in my life when you done gave my goodies away. Shout out to my older brother, Kenny. He said this years ago. He said, um, you know, I love my wife. They've been together for years. He said, but my wife and I, we have an understanding. And I had never heard of the, you know, the, the, the vagina, the womb, that special place. I had never heard of it characterized or described this way. But he said, uh-uh, we understand. You don't get my goodies away. Once you get my goodies away, mm -mm, I don't want them no more. And beloved, I'm the same way. I don't care what I did. Any woman that's with me, if you ever give my goodies away, you let some other dude have what's mine, I don't want you no more. I don't care how many children you got. That's me. That's how I manage my manhood. Because first of all, if you done tasted and seen my royal scepter and you let some other dude put their little rod up in you and ride you off the range, I just don't want you no more. And I ain't mad at you. And, I, and us having a child is not going to change that. You got to go. So to, for me, it's an utter failure that he took a woman back. But even worse, that she has the nerve to be pregnant. So, brother, I don't think it's that she don't understand what you're going through. Brother, you don't understand how to go through. But no problem. King Isom is here, ready to teach, ready to help. Let's keep going here. I want to go ahead and get to the end of this. Let me ask you this, Mr. Kaiser. The whole time she was pregnant and you accepted her back, you're thinking the whole time and she's pregnant by another man? Or were right. you thinking this could potentially be my child as well? Great I didn't question. think it was my child, your honor. Your honor. I didn't think it was my child. I, I, I always thought it was the other man's child. I can't took her another man, baby, y'all. Especially... Hey, she was cheating on me with. I was not cheating. She now, now, brothers, he, he just said the answer right there. But it's one thing to say the answer. And it's another thing to display. What's display mean? It means to show yourself a man. A lot of brothers, and I've been there in, in other instances. But a lot of brothers, they talk a good guy. I can't take you no other man, child, your honor. And, and worse yet, it could be the child of the man she was cheating on me on. Brother, you got your answer right there. So why are you six months later or six months in to taking care of another man's child? You just said that you are 100% sure that it's not yours. You haven't gotten a DNA test. So you saying a good game. But brothers, we got to display our good game. Managing your manhood is you got to show, and that means making some hard decisions and prioritizing yourself first, not the woman and not the opinion of anybody else. Mm, mm, mm. Now watch how this man cannot nail this woman down to admit the obvious, that she was communicating with this man before they split. Watch her continue to deflect uh, create uh, a fire over here and blame them over there. She never admits the obvious. Check it out. Everyone. She said, you know, she said she wasn't cheating on me, right? But she had the other man's phone number long before she moved out. And she was still staying in my house. I was at his house and I'm working it 12 hours. Now that's a deflection right now. Watch this now. He just asked her a question or he posed it to her basically some evidence. Hey, you had his number before you moved out. Watch how she deflects and jumps. He said before she left my house, and she says what in response to that? I never wanted. She to. said, "Y'all, you know, she said she wasn't cheating on me, right? But she had the other man's phone number long before she moved out, and she was still staying in my house. I was at his house, and I'm working it, twelve hours a day to take care of the bills for that house. I'll pay. I'll pay. I was rent. working the. He, she's always talking over him, and that's common for a woman. They're very verbal. As they construct their victim narrative, deflect and jump around, they talk a lot. And men are not as verbal because we like to rely on the basic facts and evidence. While the woman likes to create a mirage <laughs> with many words. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm giving y'all game today, brothers. She said, I'm paying all the bills. And he said while she was talking over him, but I pay the rent. You probably didn't hear that. Keep going. Shift. He was supposed to be home taking care of the kids. I interact with the kids all the time. 
all the time. The whole time she was at work. I can't why, say that's true. Why, why 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 like she said, I can't say if that's true or not. A woman who maintains a man is full of anger, impudence, and reproach. Now, you mean to tell me, sister or ma'am, that you can't tell if he's taking care of the child? That you have to get off work at five and put the baby down? You mean the baby ain't slept since, you know, all at night? Something is rotten in Denmark. But she has to say that because she's in a very unfavorable position of being a hoe if she got a child from another man. So she has to construct the narrative of being a victim, but she never answers the obvious. And this brother, let's be real, he, he don't seem too sharp, got a speech impediment. She constantly got him on his heels. She on the job uh, messing around with this other man while I'm at home taking care of the kids. I'm on the job messing around with another man. I'm working 12 hours in a dog bed factory. What's, what's that got to do with you being on the job? That's even more the case you're messing around. You know how it goes at work, brothers. I know I've been there. My God, I got so much to share on this thing, man. I've been there. I'm going to keep it a buck. Not, not messing around, but when you at work, you with somebody all day, especially 12 hours on the night shift. On the night shift? How that song go? Gonna be some sweet stuff, sweet stuff going down. When? On the night shift. <laughs> Boy, I done been on the night shift, brothers. Hear me? You getting sleepy? You know, especially a brother like me. Now, I've never messed around on the night shift, you know, to my knowledge. But, you know, you making jokes. When you got co-workers, folks, familiarity can breed contempt. But familiarity can also breed attraction. So this whole notion of you working 12 hours, where that brother working the night shift with you, you know what time it is, sister. Let's just keep it a buck. But you can't keep it above. You can't keep it real when you're living in the land of make-believe and you're trying to invite everyone else to join you there. You got his phone number. And that's how I got it. Well, if you would have been taking care of him. Uh-oh, uh uh-oh. Watch. Let me go back to that little bit here. Look at it. I'm messing around with another man. I'm working 12 hours in a dog bed factory. And that's how you got his phone number. And that's how I got it. Well, if you would have been taking care of business at home, no other man would have been able to even talk to me. But you were too busy fighting. I understand that. You were too... Do you hear that, brothers? When he continued to pose, and he poses the same question, how you got his phone number? It's just to prove the obvious. You were messing around before you left. As a matter of fact, you left because you wanted to jump and monkey branch to what you thought was better. Get back on the blank carousel and have some fun. But you don't want to admit that. Now look what she says to him. If you have been taking care of your business... I wouldn't have to go to another man. When a woman maintains a man, she has no respect for him whatsoever. And look at the crowd reaction to her brazen statement. And that's how I got it. Well, if you would have been taking care of business at home, no other man would have been able to even talk to me. But you were too I'll, busy fighting. I understand that. You were too busy finding a reason to argue at any given second. So... Obviously, there was a breakdown in the relationship. Your Honor, my and sister passed away. And Here comes the next sob story. And I'm not knocking her sister passing away. But what I am knocking is this constant attempt by typical modern women to create a narrative that paints them as a victim. And when you present evidence contrary to the same, they deflect and jump around just like a child. That's why I tell you, brothers, the typical modern woman is like a child. I work with children every day. They move in the same way. Never want to accept responsibility. Always blaming everybody else for their deficiencies. It's ridiculous. Let's hear this other sob story that is used to blame the man for why she want to go out there and be a, you know, what she was. Instead of this man right here taking care of me and hugging me and telling me everything would be okay, he started to fight and left. But you know, he you know, left. He, did, he wasn't there. The other man is the one who was texting my phone saying, are you okay? Why was he texting your phone? How you have your phone number? Okay. Notice how he keeps coming back because he's... Tr this is what men usually do when they get in arguments. I'm talking about men who know that the woman is wrong. And I'm going to tell you right now, brothers, it's an exercise in futility. The woman is allergic. Shout out to Kevin Samuels. I'm going to keep that brother name ringing. The ones that many typical modern women celebrated his death because they were mad that he and many other men, they're exposing your nonsense. They're exposing your very nature. And you're angry that the jig is up. 
Look how this woman continues to deflect and will not own up to. She's already talked herself into a hole. But brothers, stop wasting your time arguing with a woman. That's the one thing I've learned in my many years. I've always been a man of wisdom. I've always moved differently. But when you begin to understand the nature of the woman, the typical modern woman, first of all, let me pause for the cause. Shout out to the good women, the mature women with your gorgeous self, these feminine women, those who know how to take responsibility, those who know how to honor and respect the masculine principle. We looking for you, boy, your gorgeous self. Talking about a diamond in the rough. Who can find a virtuous woman? We celebrate you beautiful sisters. We know how rare you is. But unfortunately, the typical modern woman is just that typical. Listen to her again. And is the one who was texting my phone saying, are you okay? Why was you texting your phone? How you have your phone number? Why weren't you taking care of me? Wow. We was arguing all the time during that time. Exactly. You all still I arguing now. <laughs> I can't even get a word in. Wow. So there obviously was a breakdown in the relationship. Right. Yes. And you ended up breaking up completely. Yes, and the only reason that I left him, Your Honor, is because the other man was paying more attention than he was. Wow. If you That's have your, time. if your woman is working twelve hours graveyard, when your woman comes home, when look, look at the girl in the background now, co-signing this foolishness. Like to have a little breakfast, or she goes to sleep. I had to put our baby to sleep when I'm coming home at five o'clock in the morning. I look at this dude, man. Dude, you look like a simp and a sucker, <laughs> holding another Negro baby, smiling with pride. <laughs> We got to do better, brothers. <laughs> my baby sleep. Then I have to do my school Not every online. day. Not every day. Not everything every day. was all on baby. Shirley and nothing was on Mr. Not every day. She, have she said everything was all on Shirley. He wasn't doing nothing. He's a deadbeat. He's nothing. When a woman maintains a man, she's full of anger, impudence, and reproach. The baby sleep every day, y'all. I left because... When my sister died and he was not there for me and I needed a shoulder to cry and I didn't have it. Right, so you went with- Look at the lady in the background shaking her head. She can relate. <laughs> Look at her. And he was not there for me and I needed a shoulder to cry and I didn't have it. Right, so you went- Oh. <laughs> this other guy. I went through the other man because he made it unbearable for me at the house. He and now you I say that this mind. man, Mr. Kaiser, is baby Isaac's biological father. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Okay, listen. The question yes. is, yes. is oh. the timing in which he was conceived. I can explain that to you right here. I'm 100% sure. Great. She said, I can explain that. I'm 100% sure. Let's move on from this buffoonery and get down to the benny gritty. And now we're back on track. Ryan, can That's I see right, that judge. evidence, please? Get him back on track. Your Honor, on the 25th of March is the last time I had... I like that judge. She a little cutie. Got a lot of makeup on, that weave on, you know. But, you know, she's a little cutie. <laughs> Been sexual with the other man. Looking good, sis. On the 25th of March, yes. she, you were intimate the with the other guy. Yes, ma'am. Keep going. Okay. Uh, on the 28th, me and Mr. Kaiser, we got back together. I this lady done came in here with a color-coded calendar. <laughs> You're talking about being committed to constructing the narrative. But here's my question, brothers. Why are we going through all of this? Let's talk about sex, brothers. You need to, man you need to mandate that DNA test. Why are we going through all of these changes? We're going to talk about this. Let's let her continue to construct a narrative. And back to where he was at with our children. Mm -hmm. We had unprotected sex on the 28th, mm -hmm. the 29th, mm -hmm. the 30th, the 31st, and the 1st. Freeze that. Now, I want to talk about sex right here. Brother, I'm, getting, I'm having a little fun, but let's get serious here. Look at these dates. The one in blue, she says, intimate with the other guy. This dude jumping up and down on her, you know it's raw. And you know how it is because she's just the rental for him. When I was in California on business a couple of years ago, I had to go up there about six times in the span of a year. So I was constantly going to LAX, rent a car, and drive out to, uh, to Thousand Oaks. Once they had gotten my car wrong and they gave me a, a free upgrade, a Dodge Challenger, vroom, sports car. That thing was a monster. Brand new almost. Do you think I treated that rental car like I would treat my own Dodge Challenger if I paid for it? Heck no. I wanted to see what it could do. 
I would put my foot in that thing. I would get me some fry. You know, when you're you traveling, you kind of eat out a lot. Drop a, fly, a fry on the floor. I didn't care about that. I mean, I'd throw the trash out, but I didn't care about doing this a little bit of this. I didn't really care for it. Why? I knew when I was done riding it hard and popping wheelies. I wasn't popping wheelies, but doing my thing, just having my way with it. I'm going to go and turn that rental back into the agency. And they got somebody to be the cleanup man. That's what a side dude does. And when that woman jumps out and makes her excuses to leave, to go with that guy who's been talking to her and whispering her all that sweet stuff going down on the night shift. He said, Miss England, <laughs> let me keep on. You think he wasn't freaking her down? If I, I, now, I'm not the side dude type, but if that was me, I'd be doing all kinds of experiments with her. Freaking her out. And she was loving it too. You mean to tell me, brother, you're going to let that woman come back to you? That's an utter failure right there. And you're going to have the nerve to sleep with her wrong? Brothers, that's not managing your manhood. You're putting your very life at risk. You're going to have to get some. First of all, you ain't coming back to me at all. But if you're that foolish to accept the woman who done gave your goodies away, done rented them out, got a back blown out and come back home to you. You should be getting three or four blood panels. I'm talking about the full blood panel. And I want to run it three or four times. If you're going to be foolish enough to take a woman back who's played the whore, we got to think about our life, our mission, our purpose, and stop being so foolish. And listen to me, women, you too. AIDS and herpes and all kind of mess. That goes for all of us, brothers and sisters. Let me keep going here, man. I don't, that's foolish right there. My conception date is the 30th of March. I had sex with the other man before the conception window. Were you sleeping with this other you man unprotected? Shit. No, ma'am. That's a damn lie. Excuse me. <laughs> you a blank lie. But anyway. So on the 5th, you take a pregnancy test and it comes back negative. Yes. In your mind, you're saying, well, yeah, if I'm not the pregnant third, on the 5th, I slept with this other guy on the 25th. If I'm not pregnant on the 5th, then it, it then can't be his it child. It can't be his child. Mr. Mr. Kaiser, you don't look yes, like you're sir. buying this at all. I need to say something really bad. <laughs> I want to say something. <laughs> okay, now they're going to come with a little, you know, little, little, you know little advertisement there. We're going to kind of speed this up a little bit. I've gone a long time, but I'm enjoying myself. Let's get this. Y'all, the reason why I'm not buying this, y'all, is because she left with the other guy on the third. I did she not have pregnant. intercourse with she that man anymore. We slept together. You Wait a minute. So she said, she, his brother said they, that she came back. He slept with her unprotected. She left him again to be with that guy on the third, and she has the nerve to lie and say, we didn't have intercourse. I just went back for, I guess, to get some more comfort. From the 28th until the 31st, right? No, she, was, she, left, she left on the 30th with the other guy, right? For two weeks. On and April 3rd? Said, oh, pregnant on the 15th. So how do I know it's not the other guy's baby? Well, oh, I, you're saying she went back she to the other on guy? The third. She left on the 3rd and went back to the other guy on, on the 3rd. The 3rd of March or the 3rd of... The 3rd of April. 3rd of April? Yes. The well, we're missing some colors. No, the 3rd of April. The 3rd of April. On this calendar. Ma'am, Your Honor. The 3rd of April, I left and went back, but I never had intercourse with that man again. How do I know with that, Your Honor? You don't I... know that. You just have to go off my words. Did you hear what she just said, brothers? When a woman maintains a man, she don't respect this brother at all. She says, you don't know. You just have to trust me and go off my word. Look how flippantly she said that. That's cool. I mean, this is getting kind of, you know, getting on my nerves. Let's move on here. That baby's and off. brother, you are a fool. I got mad love for you, but oh my God, look at this brother, man. Got a good heart, but a good heart is not enough. You got to have a good mind that knows how to manage your manhood and move how a man should move. Come on, man. Tongue tied. Genetic trait. The baby okay. looks like our three-year-old child. Okay. Same trait. Okay. And you're referring to a medical condition. Yes, ma'am. She she don't know if that guy's father. That's not true. I, I, what if the other guy didn't have it? 
But he did have it. You sure I'll tell you all that? His daddy did not have it. I, I How does she know that, your other? Question. How she the reason why she knows is because she wants the other guy. She's already investigated. She already knows that she was having unprotected sex. She's lying, telling on herself right now. Brother, she don't want you. She just needs you. Let's move on through this stuff right here. All this stuff about tongue tied and, 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 and teeth and all this kind of mess. That is irrelevant. Won't you get a DNA test and that will solve all of that? This is a bunch of, uh, a lot to do about nothing. She never met the other guy's father. Listen, it is your assertion that because baby Isaac is tongue tied and that's a medical condition that Mr. Kaiser has as well and it's proven to be Hereditary and genetic, it can be passed down. You believe that's a further indicator that he is baby Isaac's biological father? Yes, ma'am. And there's and another part of the proof. What is yes, that? Yes, ma'am. Those teeth that he has in his mouth, he was born with those teeth. Those are called neonatal <laughs> teeth. And Mr. Kaiser's first cousin's child was born with teeth as well. It All is proven right. to be a genetic trait as well. So another genetic trait is that but he was he born was with teeth. teeth. Usually people... Babies don't develop teeth until later yes. on. Yes. He was born. He was born. And that's another medical condition that you have seen I have heard in about Mr. Kaiser's family. I haven't heard yes, about the Billy genetic trait, though. About the, about the, you should the do teeth. your research. I haven't heard about the Billy genetic trait. I appreciate. Okay, you should do your research. Brothers, you should get a DNA test. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. She brings in uh, what she says is a doctor, and they begin to talk about the, you know, the, the premature teeth. And, and, the, and the probabilities, et cetera. But none of that is, I wanna go ahead and fast forward through that and get to the main point and wrap this up. 18 years ago, cousin saw the ball with teeth, 18 years ago. So I guess it is possible. It's possible, but she I mean, she still was possible. with the other guy for. The doctor said it's a possibility that those are genetic traits. And But the, the bottom line is brothers, the DNA test gets you from probab probability to positivity. For two weeks before, before she got, got the pregnancy. Well, that's why we bring in expert testimony. So, so. Because we need we don't to know, We don't know. It. We can't find out if this other guy got, had, had people in his family that had. That was Your Honor, I asked, I, I asked him, I asked his sister, I asked his mother. Nobody has any kind of. Yeah, don't nobody care about that. They don't nobody care about that. Mr. Kaiser, if baby Isaac is not your biological child, can hmm. you still work on the relationship? Or is it over? That, that's a powerful question. If this woman done let another dude impregnate her while you are with her, split or not, are you going to take care of that woman and another man's child? It's over, y'all. It's over. I can't do it. I can't do it, y'all. It's over. And because because I, I've, I've already helped her, helped her, raise, helped her raise her other child. Mm. And I raised, I raised the child. And then... It, it's gonna be a problem, you all, because this might be the baby of the man who she actually cheated on me with. So how am I gonna raise your child? Now look what he says here. The, and this again is the issue, brothers. He is saying himself a man. He's saying the right answer, but he is not displaying himself a man. We can't just talk all this talk. We gotta walk what we talk and show ourselves a man. Come on, brothers. He just said the answer. He said, it's going to be a problem if it's the other man's child. And the, the problem is more than he can imagine. How do you think that little boy, he's a cute little baby right now, oblivious to everything. But what happens if that child grows up and has some kind of gifting, a LeBron James or whatever? Just running different scenarios. And then the biological father shows, that, hey, I want to be a part of my son's life. What you going to do? What happens when that child is 19 and 20 and you don't raise another man's child and he begins, he being the child, begins to have a longing to know who his real father is? You can't get mad at that child. Why would you set yourself up to be in that kind of construct with the woman who let another man ejaculate in her womb? Why are you even considering that? I never cheated. I did not get. But you had his I phone number get, I had before his you phone moved number. out. But I did. She just said she finally admitted I had his phone number. I That's because she cheated. Physical relation. You want to talk about cheated. cheating? Talk uh oh, about here comes another deflection. If I, you did. If I had his phone, if I had a phone number. You want to talk about cheating? Talk about what you. You had, had plenty of women's phone numbers. Wow. I found how many. No. 
How one. many have I found because you one. can't hide them out your pant pocket? One. I'll be honest. One. one. And I never have a nation with them. Your Honor, I used I to have to go have... through this. Yeah. Brother, you lying. You've been hidden. Okay, come on. Wally, not, not number, number, you're number, the, number. I, I asked him who it was. He the, started lying to putting men's names the, on the number. The, All I, right. That is not true. I called the that woman's number true. and she told me what he had on. See how verbal the woman is? As she's deflected from the main thing, you got a child by another man. I'm not, uh, not absolving the man in responsibility. That's not the issue. But the woman will deflect and start running her mouth to continue to paint herself as a victim. Or, or if she can't uh, absolve herself of all blame, she'll pull the man into it. Well, you did this. You did that. <laughs> Folks, I've been there like a child. It's a waste of time. Get that DNA test, and none of this stress is even an issue. But what Yoda, he was doing, where Yoda, he was going. Yoda, can I say so, something, please? Can I say something, please? Can I say something, please? Brother, you weak as water up in here. <laughs> Yoda, Yoda, after the whole time, they, the, those phone, phone numbers that you found, I never slept with none of those people. The, the, the guy's phone number she had, she moved in with him. So wow. She don't care. Look at her face. Yeah, I moved in with him. And he was tearing it up like I've been wanting. So much so I came back to your simp behind, gave you a little bit to keep you quiet, and went back and got me a second round. <laughs> listen, 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 Now I have to ask the question. Yeah, get to the heart, to judge. If baby Isaac is your biological child, Mr. Kaiser, can you all move past all of this arguing over cheating? I mean, you all have been arguing for 25 minutes straight. I don't want to, I don't want I don't want to cheat no more, y'all. Okay, so he just told on himself, brother, you was cheating too, brother. Let's move on, man. Get to the verdict, judge. Woman. Come on. You know what I'm saying? It gets worse at the house. It, Answer my wait, question. Can you repeat the question, y'all? I know you didn't hear it. <laughs> this brother all wound up, tangled up, and tied up with her? Brothers, why? Let's get to the verdict, Judge. <laughs> I don't know why we taking testimony on tongue-tied. You ain't tongue-tied today. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Get a word in. I want that to be my son, y'all. I do want it to be my son. Now, why does he want that to be his son? He's established a bond with some child who may not even be his. This may sound harsh, brothers. You ought to never do that. I don't care how cute the baby is. That's not the point. You need to establish, this may sting some folks. I don't care if you're married and you have no reason to believe your wife is cheated. You should still get a DNA test. That's the world we living in now. That's my perspective on managing your manhood, by the way. I just wanna okay. make sure it's my son. I won't make sure. That's why you're here. That's right. why you're here. And luckily, thank goodness. Let's get to it. I have those results Let's for you. Let's get to it. I'm going to wrap this up. The envelope, please. Do you? Now, brothers, I don't normally go this long. I meant to go about 40 minutes here, but, you know, bear with me. Bear with me. I'm going to get some feedback from you guys. Let's get to the verdict, Joe. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics. In the case of England versus Kaiser. Mm -hmm. When it comes to six-month-old Isaac England, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Kaiser. Now, I want you to look at the crowd response. Look at everybody. Let's get it. Are not the father. Oh. You sure? I'm sorry, Mr. Kaiser. You sure? You are are you I'm sure? so sorry. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's gotta be a mistake, right? It's a mistake, right? <laughs> I am so sorry, but it is not a mistake. Now, brothers, that man is crushed. And you saw what probably was his mother. I guarantee, because mothers know. A mother can look at a child and say, you know what, that ain't your baby son. I guarantee that mother has let him know. And family members have told him, you need to get that. Ch I know he's been told to get that DNA test. And now, six months later, I'm not going to lie, man. When I first saw this man, it tugged at my heartstrings, man. I mean, I didn't break down crying, but, you know, I kind of sniffled a little bit. Because the brother is broken. Let's run it back a little bit, man. We almost done.
My goodness, man. This is what can happen to you, brothers and sisters, when you don't man brothers rather, and sisters too, but I'm talking to the brothers right now, when you don't manage your manhood and you mandate a DNA test. Look at it now. Versus Kaiser, when it comes to six month old Isaac, England, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Kaiser, you are not the father. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Kaiser. Yes, sir. Are. Are you I'm sure? so sorry. Brother like Samuel Jackson a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Look at her. You gotta be a mistake, right? It's a mistake, right? I am so sorry, but it is not a mistake. Now, now, the woman, I, this is what I wanted to get to, brothers. The DNA test could have, could have solved all this about six months ago. But I want you to listen to this woman, the one who bought him from Ashy to Classy, the one who said, well, if you were Classy, that's debatable. I made you what you were. I paid the bill. You didn't do anything for me. The woman who displayed her impudence and reproach because in her eyes, though it wasn't true, she maintained him. She made him. Yeah, I slept with him, Your Honor. What about what you did? You didn't take care of business. He was there for me. He texted me. All of that pride, all of that hubris. Now we find out that that child is not that man's responsibility. That means you are a baby mama to three different dudes. He only got one child with you. He already told you, if the child is not mine, I'm gone. And don't nobody else gonna want you. You are, I'm gonna keep it real. The wall, didn't, you didn't land on the wall. The wall landed on you. You're overweight. You're undereducated. You got three baby daddies. What do you have to offer? And now the woman, you're going to see it. She goes back to her primary instinct, survival. Who can I use? My narrative has been blown out the water. Let me try another approach now to make sure I can salvage something to help take care of me and my problems. Listen to her. This is a common refrain from this society to what they expect from men. You are not baby Isaac. But he can be father. his father. It doesn't matter if DNA or not. He can be that son of that boy's father. Now notice now, I'll run it back. The women in the green and yellow who was co-signing, they not clapping. Because they realize, nah, sister, you trifling. Listen to her now. You are not baby Isaac. But he can be his father. father. It doesn't matter if DNA or not. He can be that son of that boy's father. <laughs> Just because he has a daddy that don't care. Why can't he be the daddy that does? We've been through hell and back. Six years. We've been homeless together. We've had to struggle to get where we are now. I don't think it has the end because it's not his blood. Our other child he raises just fine. I understand. Wait a minute. Oh, how the tune has changed. Now it's together. Before it was me, I'm doing it all. I'm the boss bitch, as they say. I'm going to school. I'm getting my degree. Now that you've been found out. Now we've been through so much together. Now we were homeless together. He said, she said, he raises my other child, the one that's not his, that she had when he met her, just fine. I thought he didn't do anything. The woman is a chameleon. And once you find this typical woman out, she'll jump to a, another role to try to guilt you into being her rental car agency. When that other brother who was smart enough to say, I don't care, baby, you're not, I don't want you. You were a rental. We had fun, you had fun. Like DMX, like DMX said, what they really wrong for my black girl? I did mine, you did yours. He didn't want to wife you. You investigated, the family don't want you either. Brothers, what shall we say to these scenarios? We in this courtroom recognize that biology creates family, of course, but there are all... Look at this brother. <laughs> 
brother going through. And I'm not trying to mock the brother, but listen to me. You get what you deserve when you don't move in the right way. You shouldn't have never took that woman back to begin with. And if you did have the foolhardy notion to do so, you should have got a DNA test in private a long time ago. So my heart goes out to you, but you are the man. You've got to manage your manhood, brothers. Now she got these crocodile tears flowing. And somebody's saying right now, well, brother, you being so harsh on her. Where is the mercy and grace? The Bible says God gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. She been proud the whole time. Now she want to fake humility because you've been found out. And you about to get out there with three kids and three baby daddies. Those tears don't move me. I resist the proud. And furthermore, my responsibility is to the brother. That's not his child. Let's wrap this thing up, man. Listen to her now. As she begins to tell more truth that she's been deflecting and hiding from us the whole time. So families created through love. When you all came into this courtroom, Look you told brother. me your relationship was on the line Looking and you pillow. needed this answer. But I'm not ready to let go of the relationship, Your Honor. Uh -oh. I love this man. This is the longest relationship I've ever been in. Mm. And that's for you two to figure out. She said, I'm not ready to let go of the relationship. No, 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 no. She's not ready to let go of the protection and provision that she denied him ever providing to her. She realized the other man don't want her and she's trying to monkey branch back to use this brother right here. Come on, man. This is the longest relationship I ever had. That means you function from dysfunction. You didn't act like you valued the relationship before when you thought you had the upper hand trying to create some narrative to preserve your reputation. Come on, brothers. You got to learn from this stuff, man. You can work it out. <laughs> Ms. England, I have to ask you, so do you know for certain that baby Isaac's father is this other yes, man? Yes, ma'am. I did not have intercourse with anybody else. I'm not a thought. Quit, quit lying. Oh, I'm sorry. She said it earlier. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. She said, you don't know. You just have to take my word for it. <laughs> man, please. It don't matter if you didn't. You got a child by another man. And brothers, you already know what I recommend. This man want to be in his life? No, neither does the family of the man. The only people that help with this child is him and his family. Mr. Kaiser. Wow. She said the man don't want anything to do with the child. That means they talked about it. That means she knew it was his. So a strong possibility. She was lying. She said the family of the man. None of them want you because you were a rental. You played yourself. You tried the monkey branch and they told you, no, this is a temporary twig. Now get out of here. And I'm not happy that happened to you, but I'm not moved by your tears. You reap what you sow. And then when you come back with the pride, proud look and tone and disparaging, disrespectful demeanor, and you expect some grace and mercy now? Come on, man. Come on. What would you like okay. to say, sir? I still want to be there for a brother. <laughs> oh, my God. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want you brothers to see what's waiting for you, what this society expects of you. No matter how much you get disrespected, no matter how much you get disparaged and demeaned, no matter how much they talk that talk and walk that walk all over you, no matter if they got another dude ejaculating up in you after having all the fun he wanted freaking with them, your woman, they expect you to come back as the rental car agency, clean up all the trash and watch that thing up and maintain another man's child. That's how little this society and the typical modern woman values you and your manhood. And this is the response they expect of you. Look at him and listen to him now. His family. Mr. Kaiser, what would you like okay. to say, sir? I still want to be there for a brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, I'm sorry, now. Look at it's this a beautiful woman. thing to see when a child is loved. Despite everything we've had to go through today, you both love... Brothers, do you want that to be you right there? Listen, and I'm not being me, a cute, adorable little boy. That's another man's seed. 
I don't care how adorable he is, he got to go. I'm sorry. Go get your daddy to take care of you. If that's me, first of all, that ain't going to be me. I pray it never be me. You ain't coming back to me, period, when you get my goodies away. Matter of fact, you not staying with me. If we argue a lot, you got to go. Forget a baby. You got to go. But, but if you are foolish enough to sink to this depth, once you find out, I, I don't care how cute the baby is. I don't care how much the bond. If that's you, if that's me, I speak for me. I'm going to say, look here, uh, Miss England, because uh, you're taking care of all the bills and stuff anyway. So you maintaining me according to your narrative. I'm going to give you six months. Matter of fact, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you three months to get yourself together. Figure out where you're going to stay. We obviously not married. I'm going to go ahead down to the courthouse, put myself on child support. And you got three months to get yourself together. Okay. I'm going to take care of my one child. These other two, that's on you. I'm not trying to bond with them. I'm not trying to whatever. You know, I'm not sure how we're going to work that out. But I wanted to be clear. We're not staying together. I'm done with you. You got to go. And you're on your own. And I will go ahead and begin to rebuild myself up to the man I'm supposed to be and let her deal with the consequences of her choices. But true to form, this is what the, 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 the society and the typical modern woman expects from you, brothers, because you don't expect more from yourself. It's a cherish this little boy, Look and that's important. Brother. And maybe that can be your starting point. We have counseling and we have resources. No, I don't want no counseling. I don't want no resources. I want my manhood. But thank you, brothers. Listen, give me some feedback. This went an hour. I meant to go no more than about 30 minutes or so. But I'm going to go ahead and put this out. And I want y'all to give me some feedback because I want to perfect it and get it to a point to where we can all learn. But I don't want to overwhelm. So please like share and subscribe and give me some comments in the comment section as it relates to formatting, as it relates to what are your thoughts about the topic. I mean, you can share with me anything you want to share. Be respectful, of course, but I don't mind those who may dissent or may have an issue. Let's get some conversations going because managing your manhood is something we men need to learn to do together. With that said, I want to thank you once again. Uh, King Ison's at your service. I'm ready to teach. This has been the truth about manhood. I forgot to change the title there. This has been the truth about manhood. <laughs> Disregard that. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you brothers again, man. Rule well. God bless you and God keep you.